In a lot of cases, you'll want to build your own Docker images to package your applications for deployment. We'll spend the next few lessons learning about image creation and publishing. Another great use for Docker is running third-party applications and programming runtimes. Data stores, monitoring applications, log collectors, web applications, you name it, you can usually find an image for it. How do we find images, though? The easiest way is to use Docker Hub. Docker Hub is the official public registry of Docker images. Docker Hub has a nice user interface with image searching capabilities. Let's log into Docker Hub and search for an image to run on our Docker host. Once logged in, you'll see all of your published repositories. The search box is at the top right of the page. Let's try it out. Let's say we want to run RabbitMQ, which is a popular clustered messaging system that is commonly used to implement worker queues or PubSub architectures. We simply need to type the word RabbitMQ into the search box and press Enter. It looks like there's lots of possible images. Let's click the fourth image, which looks like it's a community contributed image. The image repository we clicked on is owned by the organization Gonculator Labs and is simply named RabbitMQ. Images on Docker Hub that are contributed by third parties or users are prefixed with the user or organization name. Likely, you've noticed that the images we've used in earlier lessons are prefixed with my name, Rick Fast, which is my Docker Hub username. Below the image repository name, we see the time the image was last pushed. This tells us how long ago it has been since the image has been updated. Below the last push time is a simple description of the image. Some users fill in this information, and others don't. This image is a small image running RabbitMQ on Alpine Linux, which is a lightweight Linux distro commonly used for Docker images. Most images also come with instructions on how to use and configure the image. In this case, the image explains which ports are exposed from the container. If we scroll down, we also see detailed instructions on how to run the image with different configurations. Let's go back and take a look at a different RabbitMQ image. Let's try the top RabbitMQ result, which has the most stars and pulls. You may notice that this image repository doesn't have a prefix. That's because this image is an official Docker image. Official images are curated by Docker and typically follow the best practices for Docker images, including security best practices. I would recommend that if you can find an official image for an application that you'd like to run, that you use it. Official images tend to be kept up to date much better than some user contributed images. That being said, there are a lot of third parties that provide high quality images as well. The star next to the image repository name is a button that you can click to star or like an image. Starring an image is a good way to mark it as a reminder for later, as well as to give good positive feedback to the provider of the image. I'm positive that we'll like this image, so let's star it. Let's click on the Tags tab for this image and see the available tags for RabbitMQ. Here's a list of all the image tags for RabbitMQ. You can think of a tag kind of like a version, although they are not always numeric versions. We see a number of RabbitMQ versions in the three line. We also see a tag called Latest. Latest is a special tag that can be attached to the latest version of an image. The special thing about Latest is, A, it changes, and B, that it's the default if you don't specify a tag when pulling an image. You've likely noticed that in earlier lessons I haven't specified tags when running my images. This is because I only needed to pull the latest version of the image. Notice on the right that there's a box showing the docker pull command for this image. Let's paste this into the terminal and pull the image onto our docker host. Since the command doesn't specify a tag, it will pull the latest version. After all of the image layers have been downloaded, we'll get a message that RabbitMQ colon latest has been downloaded. Now let's run RabbitMQ. There's the RabbitMQ output. Let's try pulling a specific tag this time. Here's a specific tag, 3.60 management. This tag is version 3.6 and also includes the RabbitMQ management user interface. Let's pull this tag locally and try it out. We can add a specific image tag by adding it to the end of the image name delimited by a colon. Notice that this image downloaded much faster than the first. That's because it's based off the same base image as the latest RabbitMQ image. Since we've already pulled those layers, we don't need to pull them again. Let's run it and check out the admin UI in a browser. And just like that, we have a fully working RabbitMQ instance on our Docker host. As you can see, Docker makes it significantly easier to run different third-party applications and tools on your computer.